This free tutorial is just one of 52 from our 7 Steps to Workflow Mastery course. To find out more, please visit photographycourses.biz forward slash workflow. Collections are basically your virtual folder tree. We set the folder tree up right at the beginning. Think of a collection as being a virtual folder tree within Lightroom. It doesn't actually exist as in you have folders in positions on your hard drive. They only exist in Lightroom's imagination or memory which is, hands up, the catalogue. Exactly. So they're a really useful way to organise things for specific uses. Um, it's a virtual index within Lightroom. Let me just briefly show you a way which I sometimes use them. If I just pop into here, we've got some images from Lanzarote. There are 442 images within this um, folder in the folder tree. Now, somewhere in there are some images that I wanted to use for one of my YouTube videos. So what I did was squizzy down here to collections and inside collections, you can see I made a little collection here. It's called PV181, Photography Video 181, Disassociate. It's about disassociating yourself from the surroundings. So at the time of bringing my images in, doing my second edit, I just went, oh, those are the ones I need for that film, made a collection and quickly put the images in there so I wouldn't have to go searching for them later. Let's begin by making a standard collection, but also think about tools which could help you create a collection. So things we did last week with keywords and metadata could be extremely useful when it comes to finding particular images which you may wish to put into a collection. First, let's just go take a look, see where they live. On the left side of the screen where we have our catalogues, folders and collections. If you don't see collections or indeed any of these, remember you just right click or command, sorry, control click to hide or show any of these panels. Inside collections, you can see there is a little folder here and it's called Smart Collections. Now we're going to be talking more in depth about Smart Collections in its own lesson. This is something which Lightroom gives you by default. We're going to come back to it. But if you want to make a collection, all you have to do is press the plus sign and then click Create Collection. It's immediately going to say, what do you want to call this collection? Well, let's just assume we want to make a collection where we're going to put flower pictures. So if I just type in here, flowers, I don't know if you can hear that. We've got a helicopter going over at the moment. We've got flowers typed in. We just click create. For the moment, ignore these checkboxes. You can see over here on the left, we now have this little thing here. It's called flowers. This is a collection. Notice there's nothing in it because we haven't added any images to it as yet. Now, when you're adding images to a collection, you can either do it directly from a folder of your hard drive, or you could do it from the catalog by clicking on all photos. Now, in this catalog, there are very few images simply because we set it up purely to create this course. If you have a catalog containing two or 3,000 images, obviously it's going to be a lot more there, so you're probably better to subdivide into folders. So let's have a look in here. We want to add pictures of flowers to our collection. So it's really pretty straightforward. We just go find pictures of flowers, select the image you want to add, or indeed images. Let's find something else with a flower in it. Here we go. So let's command click to select those two. Then you can just click and drag. Now you see I've got hold of the two images. Something to mention, do not click on the gray border and try and do it. Nothing will happen. It won't work click and drag on the image itself. Because I clicked on the grey border, we just deselected the other flower picture. So let's just reselect that, click within the image, drag. You can see we've got hold of two images and we just drop it straight into our flowers collection. See, this has now changed to two. If I click on that, straight away we have a folder, a virtual folder, with two pictures of flowers. Let's just go back to the main folder. That's all we have to do to come out of there. Just click to wherever you want to go. So we're going back into our Muddiford folder. But how do we go about finding those pictures of flowers, particularly if you've got, say, a thousand or more images within a folder? Well, think about keywords. So if we go to our keyword list down here, let's go find the keyword flowers. If I just click on the little arrow next to it, 
we're instigating a search using our metadata. Here are all the pictures we have of flowers within our hard drive. Notice we've gone to the hard drive. We're searching the catalog now, not just this folder. So it has gone to our hard drive. Now, if I just make these thumbs a little bit smaller here, and if I come away from all photographs and just mouse over the folder, notice that this image at the end here, it doesn't highlight with a white border. That's because this image is not from that folder. If I go to Philippines, you'll see none of them are because none of the images from there are having that keyword. But obviously we've just found all the images with flowers very, very quickly and efficiently by using our keywords. Then all we have to do, I didn't mean to do that, but it doesn't really matter. Go get flowers again, sorry. See how easy it is to click on something accidentally. We've got all our flower shots. These two are high lit because they're in here. So let's just select everything else that we want. I'm going to shift click and then deselect that one because it's already in there. And here we go. Look, look, we've just put all our flower pictures into one virtual folder in a virtual folder tree. How quick and easy was that? So this is how you create a basic collection. You just drag the images into it, but by using keywords in conjunction with the catalog, it makes it much, much easier to find those images in the first place. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified each time we upload one of our cool photography videos, or for more great photo tips, workshops, and training, come and see us at our website, photographycourses.biz.